In this module, we're going to do a brief introduction to the Fourier transform. We'll start off with the 1D Fourier transform. So the definition of the Fourier transform is fairly straightforward. If we want to take the Fourier transform of a function, say, g of t, we simply multiply it by a complex exponential here, e to the minus j, 2 by f t, where j is equal to the square root of minus 1. f, in this case, denotes temporal frequency. We integrate that product from minus infinity to infinity, and we denote the output as a Fourier transform capital G of f. Okay? And we can also denote this as taking the Fourier transform of some function g of t. Now, uh, under certain circumstances, um, and all the, certainly all the functions we're going to look at in this course, uh, we can do the inverse Fourier transform, which means we can take g of f, multiply it by complex exponential, which has um, essentially the same form as the initial complex exponential, except it's, there's no minus sign here. Um, we integrate over frequencies, and we then uh, re uh, get back our original function g of t, and that's denoted as the inverse Fourier transform of g of f. So it's uh, good to talk a little bit about sort of the units that we're going to use. So typically in 1D, um, we'll be talking about time or space. And for uh, time, the units is typically seconds. And then um, for frequency, we typically talk about cycles per second or hertz. So in this case, um, the Fourier transform, we use t to denote time and f to denote temporal frequency. Now, on the other hand, we can also imagine our function is a function of space. And so in that case, we typically use x. And that could be, for example, in centimeters or millimeters or meters or whatever unit we think is most appropriate. We'll denote k sub x as a spatial frequency. And if x is in centimeters, then this would be in cycles per centimeter. And so in this case, x here we use to denote space, and kx is spatial frequency. Now I should note in the textbook, uh, they use u instead of k sub x. And so that's one thing to keep in mind. As we're looking at Fourier transforms, it's useful to remember the Euler's formula, which is essentially that the complex exponential e to the j theta can ex be expressed as some cosine theta plus j sine theta. And we'll talk about this more in depth when we talk about MRI, but essentially we can view uh, every complex number in the complex plane. And so e to the j theta is simply this complex number, which has cosine theta on the real axis and sine theta on the imaginary axis. So we use that, we can write our 1D Fourier transform, and here we're using x and kx. We expand out into the cosine and sine, and therefore, uh, when we're looking at this part of the expression, this is essentially taking g of x and multiplying it by cosine 2 pi kxx and then integrating it. And this is a form of an inner product, and so it's really saying what part of g of x looks like this function, cosine 2 pi kx over x, where the period is simply 1 over kx. So in, in a sense, this is the period, which is just 1 over the frequency. Similarly, the, the imaginary part here is simply what part of g of x looks like sine of 2 pi kxx. And here we're basically comparing our function g of x to the sine function uh, with also with the period 1 over kx. So to give some sort of intuition behind this, uh, imagine we have a radio station, or three radio stations, each broadcasting a sinusoidal uh, waveform. So we have different frequencies and different amplitudes. Okay, so this has um, the highest amplitude here. This has the next highest amplitude. And this has the lowest amplitude. This has the highest frequency. This has the lowest frequency. If we sum them all up in terms of what our radio antenna is receiving, then we end up with this function x of t, which is composed of these three sinusoids. So if I take the Fourier transform, then what I can say is, especially if I look at the magnitude of the Fourier transform x of f, then that tells me sort of the magnitude of each of these sinusoidal components. So essentially, it's saying I have the most energy uh, amplitude at this sort of intermediate frequency, uh, somewhat less energy at the lowest frequency, and the least energy at the highest.